If you've been learning to code with the hopes of getting a software developer job, then you've probably come across leak code. I personally get a lot of messages from you guys asking when you should start leak coding, how much time you should spend leak coding, and also what kind of questions you should know and practice. And it's a really interesting question because I actually didn't leak code and instead found what I feel is a better route that still got me a job as a software developer. So in today's video, I'm going to share the reasons I decided not to leak code, explain why it's less of a requirement than people think, and finally share what I did instead to get my job as a remote software developer. As always, if you enjoy the video, smash the like and subscribe buttons, and with that all said, Let's begin this story where all good stories begin at the beginning. So the first thing on the list for discussion is why I actually didn't leak code in the first place. Now when I was learning to code there was a lot of pressure to do it and it's what I heard absolutely everyone was doing. But for me I was actually pretty shook because it seemed like there was a huge misalignment between what I was learning when I was learning to code, what you would do in a job and leak coding questions which for some reason didn't fit the puzzle. It seems to be a super niche education and in saying that it's probably a great education to have if you have the time, but I just really couldn't see the point or purpose in it, learning a whole new skill set that wouldn't necessarily help me in my day to day job. Now, small admission, I actually did do one or two leak coding questions, but the learning experience from that was not actually how to answer the leak coding questions or getting good at it. It instead actually showed me just how much I didn't know about this whole topic. And if I tried to add this onto my plate, you know, I was already feeling overwhelmed just learning full stack development and all that kind of stuff. It really would have stolen the wind from my sail and put the nail in the coffin. I would have been absolutely cooked and it's just too much to handle. The good news is though, is that it's predominantly fan companies that are going to actually ask these questions. And so if your goal is to get into a fan company like Google or Netflix or Amazon or Apple, then unfortunately I think you are going to have to play their game. You are going to have to learn the leak code questions, learn how to answer the leak code questions. However, for any other style of company, a lot of the programming questions are actually pretty straightforward. At my company, they were incredibly rudimentary to be totally fair. And to make it even better, you'll often get a practice environment where you can, you know, muck it up a couple times and it's no biggie. And then when you go through for the actual one, you know, you have a much better chance at success. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be a perfect process, but for the most part, as long as you can get through the programming questions for these non-fan companies, that's going to be hugely advantageous. Point is, as I committed to not doing the leak coding questions, and I had more interviews, I started to realize that in a lot of cases, leak code is not going to be the only way to actually get the job. Now, if we're looking to find an alternate route to leak code, we have to actually understand why leak code will get you a job in the first place. And the main reason is because it gives you credibility. If you can do the leak code in questions, you've clearly demonstrated that you know how to resource, you know how to find the knowledge, you know how to learn. And so it's a big check of approval for a lot of the fan companies. As I said, though, it's still totally unrelated to learning to code and what you'd actually do in a job. So it's a bit painful. But the point is where leak code would originally give me credibility, I instead needed a new pathway that would also give me credibility. The new method that I looked for, I really wanted it to be incidental so that I wouldn't even have to think about it. And it would be very aligned and genuine with the learn to code process that I was already going through. So it wouldn't feel like I had to split my time between two different things and I could achieve both simultaneously. That was really going to help me with feeling overwhelmed in the whole process because the less things I had to think about, the better the outcome was going to be. Now the solution that I came up with was really to go 150% on my projects. Upon reflection, I really felt like it was projects that would prove your worth to a company almost as much as a software engineering qualification itself. They're the best way to really say that you can do what they need you to do. In all of my interviews, it was literally just me going through my portfolio of projects and a large proportion of the time, the things that I would show them that I had done actually aligned with some of the tasks that they would do in their companies with their tech stack, the work that they were doing. So I could just sit there and flex all the crazy stuff that I built. And it was even better because building projects is almost the best thing you can do for learning to code. So having that extra incentive to really go the extra mile on your projects is just going to compound your learn to code experience, make you 10 times the developer that you would be otherwise. And the best part for me was that I didn't have to spread myself too thin. I didn't have to overwhelm myself with the sheer amount of knowledge that you need to get good at leak code and learning to code. I could just focus on one thing, nail it, hit the mark, and that got me the job. Anyway, that's the whole story of how I didn't leak code to get my remote software developer job. If you have the time, absolutely, it's 
a great thing to do. It's a good skill set to develop. But if you're feeling overwhelmed with the learn to code process already, just know that it's not essential. You don't have to do it and you can prioritize projects which are going to align with your learn to code journey, hopefully make the process much more manageable and achievable and still get you the job regardless. If you wanna learn more about what projects you should do to get your job, I'd recommend watching this video right here. It's really good. I made it myself.